Hey guys, how are you doing? In this video, I want to talk about this new playlist that I've created for you guys. As you can see on my screen, this playlist is called 17 Killer Golang Projects. So what I've done is I've gone through all the videos that I've created on my channel and I've found the 17 videos that I think are the perfect uh, videos for a beginner developer to start with. So starting uh, the, the way they've been arranged are also very conducive to learning in a sequential manner. In the sense, you start with a very basic project, the first video, which is just building a basic web server with Golang. And then you build a CRUD API. This has no database. So you don't now uh, with this CRUD API, you build on knowledge of using the web server, but you don't have to work with the database. And then uh, we've used the most common database that somebody can use, which is MySQL. So so you're sequentially you're adding more and more stuff uh, to your knowledge. You're increasing the difficulty level. Then you work with MongoDB and uh, Golang, which is very different from MySQL, slightly more um, advanced, I would say. Uh, it's a little difficult or a little, uh, it takes more time for people to grasp how MongoDB works with Golang. So this is why it's uh, the next video. And then you have an actual project. So it's a very small project, email verifiable tool project, but you start understanding how to how different things come together in Golang. And now uh, these three projects, right? They're, they're very, very small projects, as you can see, uh, around 20 minutes, 25 minutes each. And they're all very easy. All these three projects are very easy to build. So they're almost at the same level, almost at the same difficulty level. And then once, when, when you have done these, you might want to take your Golang knowledge to the next level by learning uh, Docker in the sense, how would you, you know, use uh, Docker to containerize a Golang application. So that's why it's the next video. And then uh, you once you have your Golang project, once you have Dockerized it as well, you might want to push it to AWS. And the most common way to pushing it to AWS is people use an EC2 instance, right? So this is why the next video is EC2. Then you have AWS Lambda with Golang uh, because uh, it's really in these days, right? Serverless is in and Lambda is the perfect way to start. So I've used a very simple example. I've coded and deployed with you so that you just see how I've done it. Do the same. And then uh, once you learn these things, right? Uh, another complexity that comes in is how do you work with an external API? How do you pull in data? How do you work with that data inside Golang? And I've shown a very simple uh, images API. It's a library, it's a website called Pexels. They give you an API where you get a lot of free images. And there are so many applications to this. So that's probably the first API that you'd want to integrate into uh, a new application. Because let's say if you want to show some random pictures on the website, or uh, let's say you want you want random people's faces to appear in in a place where people don't put their for a profile picture. So it's it's a very very commonly used API, Pexels API. So this is why I've shown you how uh, to consume Pexels API with Golang. Then <coughs> uh, then I've shown you a library called GoFiber, which a lot of beginners they start using. Like after uh, they they learn the basic basic HTTP and all of that, they uh, very find it really easy to learn go fiber because a lot of golang learners are coming from a node.js background uh, actually according to my estimates 85 percent of the people uh, who are learning golang right now are actually already uh, node.js developers so they find it very easy to learn golang with go fiber because go fiber is very very similar to express in the sense it's almost same uh, it uses the same kind of syntax as well from what i've seen and uh, Express and GoFiber are very similar because GoFiber has taken a lot of reference from Express, but it's also ex like extremely fast. Like Express cannot even compare with GoFiber and GoFiber is even simpler to use. So this is why Node.js people find it very easy to start with GoFiber. So this is why I created these two simple projects, uh, one with just GoFiber. And I think I've used uh, SQLite here and here I've used MongoDB, right? So these two projects, once you do that, you have started taking your launch to the next level. Uh, after this, some people might want to also get into DSA, right? Where uh, where we've created this project with Cache, where uh, we use, um, I think, a, a queue. We use a queue here. We built our own queue. So uh, this will kind of bolster your knowledge even further. And then how would you build your own database from scratch if you had to build your own database from scratch? So this is another project. And then comes, uh, then things start getting serious with these two last projects. 
Uh, one is a complete AWS serverless stack where uh, you're using API Gateway, you're using Lambda, you're using DynamoDB, the whole serverless stack with Golang, but without using any framework. So we are not using any framework like serverless framework or anything like that. I've shown it to you from scratch. How do you, how can you use it? So that maybe in the future, sometimes you can you can sometime in the future you can build your own serverless stack or serverless uh, you know framework or something like that. There are a lot of serverless frameworks in the market out there, right? And um, this is how they build it. In the sense, they they get across a common serverless um, uh, you know provisioning of these resources, and then they can can uh, I'm just giving you some ideas. They can. Uh, create this into a Terraform script, and then then you know that could power off uh, the serverless framework. So uh, there are a couple of companies. I'll tell you about them. I'm uh, in talks with them now, in, like deep talks with them. I'll I'll talk. I'll show you how these work. Uh, you know, and uh, then you'll be able to understand how you how you can use serverless and build your own serverless frameworks. Anyhow, and then you have your AI bot with GoLang. Here I use Wit AI. I use Wolfram, I use Golang, and I use Slack to build a complete AI bot, which you can ask real questions to, and it can answer you those questions. Now, this is the entire playlist. And um, I highly recommend doing this playlist before you watch the other more advanced playlists on this channel. And I'll talk about those playlists as well, as in the sense, what are the playlists to do after this particular playlist, right? So um, I just want to tell you that I have kind of organized all the videos that are lying around on my channel into this nice playlist so that in a nice order, in a nice sequential manner, you can just go about completing these projects and then uh, you can go about uh, learning Golang and increasing your knowledge one by one. Uh, it should take you, uh, I think, maybe if you, if you go slow, then it'll take you four or five, four or five weeks because you might be working at the same time, you must be doing this. So like three to four weeks, I think should be ideal. And if you're really fast, then probably you can do this in a week, um, like we got two weeks. Uh, and uh, I would highly recommend you sharing this with your engineering team, your other people who work with you in your engineering team so that everybody's on the same uh, level. Everybody has the kind of experience that you have so that when you work with them, when you collaborate with them, they are also able to come up with the same kind of inputs. That's really important. So a developer in isolation is not uh, that's that a big of a thing, right? You have to work in teams. So if everybody's at the same level, then you're able to collaborate better, you're able to create better things. And also if you're not from an engineering background, if you're a product manager supporting this video, please share this with your engineering team. And, uh, or if you're somebody who's uh, really young, somebody who's in college uh, and who's learning Golang, share this with your batchmates or your friends or your colleagues or whatever. So that everybody learns this and I, I don't think uh, and, uh, a resource like this exists on the internet right now. So it's highly valuable uh, because it has deep knowledge, it has structured knowledge, it's completely organized, it's uh, well produced, right? All the code is also available on GitHub. So there is no reason for you to not share it and to not uh, make this go viral, okay? <laughs> so thank you for watching and I'll keep creating awesome content like this. Do subscribe to this channel so you keep watching such awesome content and I'll see you in the next video.